In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Today you need to go and read Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 to 17. You'll find within it, it tells you about John the Baptist being arrested and put in prison. And then it says the Lord withdrew to Galilee, Galilee of the Gentiles. It means that um, it was a mixed area, so there were some Jewish people living there, some Gentile people living there. Um, so not a pure area from the Jewish point of view of that time. And it's within this that the great light shines out. The great light is, of course, Christ. And it says that while he was there in Capernaum, he began to preach, and his preaching was this, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is nearby, or at hand, or close. Let's think about those words. Just those last few words. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close or near. Um, let's think about that word repent beforehand. I've talked about this a bit before. Repent means to turn around, to turn your mind, to change your mind, to have a different opinion, to have different goals, different aims and so on. Metania, to change about, to change the whole way your life is oriented so you are no longer the person you were before. Now, let's think about that bit by bit. When you become a Christian, when you turn towards Christ the very first time, the likelihood is that the change you're going to make is going to be a huge one, a complete 180 degree change. Let's think about it a bit like this. Imagine that you have somebody or other setting off by boat from Southampton and they intend to sail to New York, quite a long way. As they leave Southampton, if they carry on in a straight line, they're going to hit either the Isle of Wight or eventually they'll hit France. And that means that they will have gone the wrong way. So they come out of the port of Southampton and the first thing they need to do is a dramatic change in direction. They'll turn from going south to going towards the United States, towards the west. And that is a bit like somebody or other becoming a Christian. They have this dramatic, huge turnaround in their life. And then the captain of the ship could say, well, we're heading towards New York now, so I'm going to go down into the cabin, I'm going to sleep, I'm going to rest, I'm going to eat, I'm going to watch the scenery going past. And if he does that, of course, he will hit Ireland, or he's going to disappear off into the sea. And even if he has a one degree incorrectness in his direction, he's going to miss New York by a long way. The next thing he's going to have to do is he's going to have to turn the boat again so that it's steering towards New York all the time. Now, is he going to do that, say, once a week? Or is he going to do it once a day? Or maybe twice a day? Or is he going to change direction all the time? The answer is obvious. There's somebody with their hand on the boat's wheel, on the tiller, the whole time. And bit by bit they're going to be changing direction the whole time so that they're constantly lining themselves up with their destination. And the same is true for us. If you are a Christian, you will be constantly repenting, constantly changing your direction. Maybe a lot, because you've been blown off course by events, by your own sinfulness. Maybe you've hit various icebergs, or come round various icebergs, you've sinned quite greatly, and you've turned off quite a long way. Maybe you've gone back towards your old life. There could be all sorts of reasons for things going wrong like that. It might be just that the waves have slightly taken you and blown you slightly off course. 
If you're like me, you wake up in the morning, you go and say your prayers, and you want to spend the whole day as a perfect day, a sinless and wonderful day. And it lasts until just before you have your breakfast. <laughs> but it's not a dramatic shift away from God. You have strayed, you move slightly to one way, but when you correct yourself, you have to bring yourself back. If you carried along that slight wrong direction, you would miss your target, maybe by miles. Might be only one degree out, but you'd miss by miles. Just like the man in the ship, if he's one degree out from going to New York, when he sets off and he gets past Ireland, he's going to be miles and miles out of the way. Even a tiny fraction out of the way, he won't make it down the Hudson River and into New York itself. He'll be well out of the way. And you might think, oh right, so the holier you are, the nearer to Christ you become, the nearer to God you become, the less you need to repent. Well, we know, because the saints write about this and they talk about it, and the, the more holy they are, the, the, the more they, they feel depressed and um, disconsolate with themselves, because they realize that they need to repent more. Well, let's think about that ship again. Imagine that you are slightly out of line with New York just just very slightly um, and you're only about three miles away but you're down the coast you're in New Jersey or somewhere like that what do you do then? well then you have to make a dramatic shift and notice you're very close to the place where you want to be from our point of view, here in England, you're going to say, oh, they're so close to New York. From my point of view, as a Christian, I look at a saint and say, ah, oh, they're so close, so close to Christ. But the saint, or the captain of the ship, is saying, I have to change direction dramatically. The saint is saying, I have to repent more and more every day. So they're so close to Christ that they realize that they are not yet there. In fact, they have to change more and more. Do you see the way it is? You turn towards Christ, you repent, and you repent all the time. And the holier you are, the more you come no clear to, near to Christ, the more you have to repent, and the greater your repentance will be. Which is why it is that you find that people who are holy are also very humble they realize the distance, or rather the turn, that they need to make. Because they are holy people, because they are humble people, they don't realize that from my point of view they are very close to Christ. But of course you are dealing with vast distances here, and although they may, may have made huge, huge step forwards, Christ is infinite, and they see the infinity. Um, and as far as they're concerned, they're still many, many miles and huge amounts of effort away from their target, who is Christ himself. So you turn, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near, it's close by, it's within your grasp. And that kingdom of heaven is, of course, Christ himself. When he went around saying, the kingdom of heaven is close, well, yeah, very close. The kingdom of heaven is walking through their village. And when we turn towards Christ, we find that Christ is there. Sometimes he is just beyond the horizon, saying, Come, come towards me. There's a journey to go on. There's plenty of repenting still to do. There is a wonderful experience for you to have. Come, come. So we repent. We come towards the kingdom of God, who is Christ himself. And that involves ever greater repentance, a long journey, 
an exciting time, a lifetime of possibility, a lifetime of fighting hell itself. God be with you. Amen.